economists are like weather forecasters. The weather forecasters can go out a few days. Uh, economists can go out months. But going out a year or two, they get really iffy. We spend about a third of our time in recessions. So the probability going out 18 months must be something like that. I think a little bit higher than that, maybe a half, given the uh, uh, situation. Uh, but it's, there's so many factors that one could bring in. And I, I, you know, it's, I'm not confident of my ability to predict these things any more than I'm confident of anybody else. The uh, nominal home prices, according to the S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Index that I've been talking about, is essentially at a record high if you don't correct for inflation. And uh, if you do correct for inflation, it's not at a record high, but it's, it's pretty high. Uh, it's gone up since uh, uh, 2012 at a good pace. I, I count it as the third largest expansion of home prices since 1890. Late last year, we got a lot of attention in the news media to the idea that we're in the longest bull market ever. We've had the longest period of near zero interest rate. Well, they're not quite near zero. They're still on the low side. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, we will have set a record for the length of an expansion uh, if there isn't a recession by June of uh, this year. So all those things together suggest to me that a lot, a lot of people are thinking that this is getting late in the stages of, uh, of a boom. Uh, and, uh, you know, if history repeats, uh, we're in for a good chance of a, another recession. Recessions are hard to predict until they're upon you. Remember, we're trying to predict human behavior. And humans thrive on surprising us, surprising each other. Uh, and things have happened, like the election of Donald Trump. Nobody thought that would happen uh, back in 2015, but here it is, we've got him. And uh, the same kinds of things can happen again. Just like wildfires in California appeared, uh, we had a really bad year on that. Now that, that. That's just another example of surprises in history. But the problem is that we tend to magnify them. We may read into the California wildfires, for example, more than is justified. The other thing that uh, hasn't hurt us, but in principle could, is the kind of polarization uh, around President Trump and uh, the strong disagreements. Uh, and the hearings we're hearing now that, uh, depending on your viewpoint, are either proving he's a criminal or are a vindicative uh, conspiracy against a good man. But it hasn't affected the economy. I, you know, I don't think that it's easy to piece out exactly why. Uh, so it may depend on how this uh, hearings end. Yeah, I, I'm reminded of the uh, Army McCarthy hearings when Senator Joe McCarthy held hearings that uh, were on television. The first really big television extravaganza of hearings. Everybody watched it. Uh, and they, uh, public opinion turned based on those hearings. Uh, so what happened after that in the stock market? Uh, it boomed. It was great. But the, it's, it, it, the end of the Army McCarthy hearings discredited those hearings. McCarthy ended up uh, retreating because he, uh, he didn't look good in those hearings. The question is, how do these hearings now uh, that we've had for uh, President Trump, how do they weigh up, uh, ultimately affect public opinion? Uh, and I don't, I don't know the answer. These things are uh, hard to predict. The boom has lasted since 2012, but it doesn't feel so much like a boom uh, because it's a recovery from the worst uh, recession since the Great Depression. Uh, and I don't see the euphoria that we've seen in previous booms. I've been doing questionnaire surveys of home buyers. We asked them, what do you think the uh, price increase in homes will be per year for the next 10 years? And that's been uh, pretty low since around 2014. I mean, like 
It doesn't have the spread that it did. Back in 2004, people were expecting 12% a year home price increases, according to our survey. But the mortgage rate was 6% uh, or so. But that's still a 6% spread between your, you know, your long and your short. We don't have that now. Uh, we have a, something like a 4% increase expected per year. It's not exciting. And I don't think people are so excited. Having a low unemployment rate is a, is a strong forecaster for home prices. If people are worried about losing their job, they're not enthusiastic about buying a house. So one thing that's been driving the housing market is the, the much advertised fact that recently we were down to 3.7% unemployment rate, which was the lowest since 1968. And that was also, back then, that was also a low, extreme low point. Doesn't get, uh, doesn't get much better than that. So that then gives people a sense that America is becoming great again, uh, and at least uh, something like that, which encourages people to, to, to buy. And, uh, but there are also other things that are more emotional that are driving. I, I just think the Trump lifestyle, and it's not only the Trump, it's the people who surround him. There, there is uh, more of a, a, a sense that it's okay to flaunt your wealth. I mean, flaunt your wealth is a judgmental term. It's okay to, to show that you've made it in society. That's the, the so-called American dream. Uh, the American dream has been a growing influence that, uh, hey, you know, that's what we're proud of. We're proud of each other for all having such beautiful homes. <laughs> uh, that mood is, is, has been strong under a Make America Great Again president. Make America Great Again means we'll all be living in mansions or something like that. I think if you go back 50 years uh, and ask about homes as an investment, you would get a strong no. They would be, say that's too much trouble, it's hard to make it profitable. Buying a house to rent it out, hard to make that profit. I mean, some people did it. Now I think we're, well, especially in the years before the 2007 financial crisis, a lot of people were doing that. They were flipping houses, as they said. Well, the enormous housing boom that preceded the 2007 uh, financial, or the crisis after 2007, was unusually nationwide. Usually the narratives about housing and their booms were local of one sort or another. For example, when the Florida housing boom in the 1920s was attributed to the fact that we now have cars, we can drive down to Florida, everyone's coming. That was a, a simple story. Now it's breaking down a little bit. There's still a national component, but some of the best stories are places uh, that seem to have a life of their own. Notably, Seattle. Uh, Seattle uh, was the dream city, I guess, for home price appreciation a year or two ago, uh, but now it's retreating. Trump signed a bill that uh, put on an increase in the standard deduction, which made it less profitable to itemize your mortgage when you buy a house. So it changes my enthusiasm for owning a house. Also, when people don't get their tax refund in the same proportion that they used to, maybe realize that uh, things aren't as good. I don't know how to forecast the housing market, but I, th I think that it's looking a little bit weaker now, and there, there could be a change of sentiment. Uh, toward housing that would bring prices down. The, the problem of affordability of housing is not unique to the United States. I hear this in London, for example, or Shanghai. How does anyone afford to live there? And it's, it's part of the polarization that's occurring around the world between populists and uh, elitists. Uh, so in, in Britain, they're not so happy that they can't afford to live in London anymore. Uh, and they have all these foreigners coming in with their uh, huge wallets and bidding up prices. So this led to Brexit. And it could lead to economic instability in many places. It's a big theme of our time. I don't know what we can do about it. It's, it's unfortunate.